It's a well of pure water when I'm thirsty and dry. Bread when I'm hungry and worn. When the battle is raging, it's my faithful sword. A shelter from life's troubled storm. It's a light on my pathway and a lamp to my feet. When the world gets so dark you can't see. And I'm not made a change in one word that it says. But it sure made a change in me. This blessed old book that I hold in my hand is true from beginning to end. It's a solid foundation where I firmly stand. Sin kept me from it, now it keeps me from sin. When I think what it costs just to hold in my hand, it reminds me that I owe a great debt. To all of the martyrs who went to the stake And quoted with their dying breath Now its critics are many and believers are few But one thing I've found to be true If you find when you read it that there's something wrong There's something wrong with you this blessed old book that I hold in my hand It's true from beginning to end It's a solid foundation where I firmly stand Sin kept me from it, now it keeps me from sin This blessed old book that I hold in my hand It's true from beginning to end it's a solid foundation where I firmly stand. Sin kept me from it, now it keeps me from sin. This blessed old book that I hold in my hand. Good morning, everyone. Are we awake yet? Oh yeah. Okay, good. Good. A lot going on this week, isn't there? Yes, there is. A lot going on. And the Lord placed upon my heart this morning to read a verse, a couple of verses. Um, to kind of set the tone this morning. Hope it's okay. We want to continue to remember in our prayers of our nation, especially our nation, and those who are in leadership positions. We want to remember Jerry's mom and Kevin and Tammy from the front desk, and my brother-in-law, David, and we want to continue to remember all of those who are sick, all of those who are traveling, but most of all, our nation needs healing. Isaiah 5, 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. Woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine and champions at mixing drinks, who acquit the guilty for a bribe, but deny justice to the innocent. The Lord has a judgment for all that's going on. It behooves us to be ready. But we can only do that by the grace of God. Let's bow our heads. Let's stand and bow our heads. Please. Oh, 
Oh, Lord. Our hearts are heavy this morning. Because of all that's going on in our world, especially in our nation. Lord, we pray that you would be with us as your people. Help us, O oh Lord, in these last days to get the message across to those that we know, those who will listen, that Jesus Christ is the only way, the only hope, the only one we can trust in. The Lord is become very evident that we can't trust in the government. We can't trust in anything else except for Jesus. He is the one true and only powerful God, the creator of the universe. Lord God, we just call upon you to be in this service this day. Help us, O oh Lord, to have humble hearts and humble minds. Help us, Lord, to be pliable in your hands. To be the clay, Lord, and you be the part. For Lord, you are God. And we are not. Help us, Lord, to trust you more, to believe you more, to learn more about your words, and to allow grace to fill our hearts. Be with those, Lord, who are sick. Jerry's one, Kevin and Tammy. And David, Lord, my brother. And Lord, all those who are traveling from our number, Lord, we pray that you would bring them back safely to us. And Lord, while we are few in number today, it only took 12 men to turn the world upside down. Help us, O oh Lord, to have the burden to win others for you. We ask it all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Remain standing, if you would, please, and sing glory to his name.
Okay. Change my heart, oh God. Change my heart. Oh. 
Aren't you glad for that wonderful grace today? Well, I know I am. Just before the offering, we want to sing. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul.
that song right there is um, honestly one of my favorites. And just this idea of grace that we don't deserve and our chains being, being broken, us being set free by the grace of God. And, and I just think now more than ever, I, I think we understand that people need grace, right? We understand that, that people don't know that grace. They haven't received that grace. So it, it's just a, I, I love it because it's a wonderful reminder for me that of, of what I have and what others need. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to put this down. I can try to preach with the guitar in my hand, but I, I think it might get a little confusing for me. <laughs> I, have, I have a hard enough time keeping up with the slides as it is, so let's not, uh, not push our luck. Um, so that is something, uh, honestly, uh, leading, leading music, leading worship, um, that, that's something that I've done for the better part of 20 years. Um, started, uh, we moved, my, my wife and I moved, she got her first job teaching in 2001, and we found a church there. Uh, we, were, we were musicians looking for a church, and they were a church looking for musicians, and so that kind of started everything. So. Uh, from 2001 till today, I've been um, leading worship in some capacity, sometimes as, as the, the worship leader in a church, and sometimes just playing as, as a musician, but being involved. Um, and, and it's one of the things that, it's, it's a calling that I never would have expected. Um, I tell this story, and I usually try to tell it when my wife's not around. Um, <laughs> Because when I, when I first told her that I, I think God wants me to be a worship leader, she laughed at me. Um, and not meanly, she thought I was joking. I mean, she, she, she thought I was, I, I had gone through all these different things that I was going to do. I was going to be a band, I was going to be a band teacher. I was going to do music therapy. I was going to do computer repair. All these things. I couldn't, I always had something I wanted to do. I just couldn't decide on one thing that I was going to do. And uh, so I, I told her this, and, and she laughed because it was just one more thing. And it was partly because I had a hard time standing up and talking in front of, I, I had a hard time talking to one person on the phone, let alone singing in front of a group of people or talking in front of a group of people. And so she just, she, she thought it was just a joke, and it wasn't a joke. And uh, God, God has uh, kind of used me in different places in different ways to lead worship. And so it's always kind of near and dear to my heart to talk about worship. And so uh, since this is my last Sunday with you guys, uh, at least for a while, um, it's been such a privilege and an honor uh, just to be here and, and to give, give the sermon for the last three weeks, this being the fourth. Um, and so I thought I would talk about something that is kind of near and dear to my heart uh, because I really believe when we understand worship, uh, when we understand what it means to worship God, it will truly change the way we relate to other people, and it will change how people see us. And so I, I just want to start off, when, when you think about worship, you might think about different things. Uh, you might think about the, the big church choir. Uh, you might think about uh, people in a, in a uh, praise setting, raising your hands, just singing to God. You might, you might think about just this, this idea of being alone with God. Uh, or you might think it's a big concert with lots of flashy lights. I don't know. Um, I, I have my ideas on what I think worship is, but I think these are, these are some of the things that when you say that to different groups of people, different groups of Christians, these are maybe some of the things that, that they might, that might come to mind when you start talking about worship. And I think a lot of times it, it really limits us because we think that worship is, is like the last 20 minutes that we just had of music. Um, and then outside of that, it just, that, that's when we worship. Those, those 20 minutes on a Sunday morning when we're, when we're singing songs. Uh, but it, it really, I think it's so much more than that. And it's, it's really important for us to understand. Um, and I, I think, once again, sometimes we have misconceptions or we have our own ideas on things. And so when we talk about why is worship important, I think it's important because Jesus said it was important. 
In John 4, 23, he says, The time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him in that way. So Jesus said, God wants worshipers. Worshipers that worship in spirit and in truth. And so because of that, because we're following Jesus, we need to understand why this is important and really what it means to worship. The Father is looking for those who worship Him in that way. Let's look at this. Romans 12, 1. Uh, this, is, this is Paul talking. He says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. This is your true and proper worship. So I noticed two things here. I noticed two things. In view of God's mercy and offer your bodies. So when, when I think of worship, I think of it as, as kind of a call and response. God calls us. So in view of God's mercy, we respond by offering our bodies as a li living sacrifice. So that, that act of seeing what God has done and responding to what he has done is worship. This is your true and proper worship. So we're not just talking about music. Now, what I, what I love about music when it comes to worship is the fact that it brings all of us together. We're all singing the same words together, right? We're all doing the same thing. And, and the whole idea is that we're doing this corporately so that, we can, so that we can do something together and respond to God together. And what better way to do that than through music? I mean, it really does, when you think about what music does, it brings people together when you're all singing the same song at the same time and the same words. It's a powerful thing. And I don't know if you've ever been in a group of thousands of people singing the same song and singing those same words to God. It's a powerful thing, isn't it? But honestly, it doesn't matter. Thousands of people or tens of people, it doesn't matter. Singing that together and giving back to God in that way is really important. You know, um, I think I think when I think about the, the idea of responding to God and giving back to God, um, sometimes that gets a little intimidating, maybe. Um, because I mean, obviously, you're, you're talking about what do, what do you give? It, it's like it's like the, the worst birthday. What do you give the guy that, get, that has everything? Right? God has everything. What does God mean for me? What part of my broken life can I give to God that, that will matter to him? And, and I really think that response, the, the, the number one thing that we can respond with is just our love, right? Uh, Matthew 22 said, uh, Jesus is being asked what's the greatest commandment of the law, and Jesus says, love God. If you don't get anything else, that is the greatest, most important commandment, love God. Everything else comes from that, right? Love God. Uh, Mark 12, 30, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. So there's, there's not really a lot of middle ground there, a lot of gray area. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. If you don't get anything else, this is key, right? Loving God. And so this is worship. That response of love is worship. Responding to what God is doing. And, and so the, the, I think one of the, the most amazing things about music is that we can come together and we can sing together. But I also think one of the, one of the things that we run into is sometimes we know the song so well that we don't even really think about what we're singing. Right? Sometimes we know the song so well that it, it just becomes words. And so I want to sing just a verse and a chorus of the song. If you know it, feel free to sing along with me. Uh, I'm going to hope, because I don't have my guitar, I'm going to hope I start um, in a place that everybody can sing along with. <laughs> but we're, we're going to try this. And I want you, as we're singing these songs, or these words, they're not going to be up on the screen. But I think, I'm, I'm trusting, that we'll know this song. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows 
Now, this song is not scripture. I'm not trying to substitute a, a song for scripture or anything like that. But how powerful for us together to say, God, it is well with my soul. Amen. How powerful is that? That is worship. It's not the music. The music isn't the worship. It's our response. It's our response, understanding that, that God is in control and saying, I know you're in control and, and everything's good, even if it's not. Everything's good, right? And so we see that it is more than just the music we do on a Sunday morning. So today, I want to talk about living a life of worship. Because when we understand that it's more than just music, it's more than just those 20, 30 minutes at the beginning of a church service, we understand that worship happens every day where we are. All right? And so we're going to start... I talked about this verse earlier, Mark 12, 30. This is kind of the, the, the crux of my sermon today. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. So I want to dig a little deeper into this, because I think this really, this has a lot for us, right? There, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot packed into this one verse. All your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Right? And so this really gives us a pattern for how we worship it and what we need to do in our lives to be worshipers in every area of our life. Right? And so with all your heart and your soul, that's kind of that's that's worshiping God passion, right? It's 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 kind of with our feelings, with with our with our insights, right? It's 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 the I love you response, right? And it's not the it's not the boyfriend, girlfriend, I love you, oh I love you too type of response. It's it's the I love you because of what you've done. I love you because you first love me. First John 4 19 says that. We love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us. So the only way that we have a response to God. Is because he loved us first. He made the first move, didn't he? It's important for us to know. It's important for us to know that we we are called to love God with everything that we have, but also understand that we can't love Him enough for what He's done for us. Does that make sense? We. It's. Sorry, I had I had this all worked out in my head, and, and my my head's. My head's spinning here. But it's it's almost like we're in a losing battle, right? We're not perfect. We're never going to be perfect on this world. And so all we can do is try our best to have that response. And all we can do in this is just love in response. And how do we do that? How do we, how do we love 
done? And how can we respond to that? And I believe a lot of times it's not it's not just saying I love you, God, and that that's it. That's that's easy, right? But there's there's so much more to that. I, I have a video here. Um, I have a video here that I want to show that really displays what we can do to love God by loving others. So let's talk about you being a bad girl. How how did you get from being a bad girl? To being where you are now, because it, it's you well, the word, there's just the one word, which is grace. That's how everybody gets from being bad to being redeemed. Uh, and it was a 10-year lost decade. It seemed lost to me at the time. God has redeemed it all. Two people in radio. I was working in radio. Two dear people came, saw me, knew that they were brand new Christians, knew that I was their project, <laughs> and loved me into the kingdom. They just loved me. Didn't judge me. Didn't tell me to clean up my act, though I desperately needed it. They just showed me what Christianity looked like. And it looked like joy. And it looked like, um, it looked very intelligent, too. And I think I had one of those people who foolishly cast away Christianity as being with people who aren't very bright shoes. Well, you read C.S. Lewis' Mere Christianity and you go, oh, <laughs> if a man this brilliant believes that Jesus is the only answer, I need to think again. And so um, they loved me into the kingdom. Uh, in fact, my spiritual birthday uh, is, uh, is as we're here in New Zealand, which is kind of, yeah, that's kind of, yeah, I'm only 27. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Instead of 54, we won't go there. But uh, yeah, so half my lifetime was not honoring God, knowing him, and half has been, I hope, honoring him and certainly loving him. Uh, and so it's, it's just been an interesting journey. The speaking and the writing came about because of that kind of overnight, a rather miraculous conversion. Because people want to know, what happened to you? Uh, you know, you left Friday saying, pop it! And you came in Monday morning saying, praise the Lord, I've been baptized. What happened there in the middle? Uh, and what happened there in the middle was about five months of being loved, being told that there is forgiveness, that it's big enough, deep. Um, so many scriptures that are so beautiful, but how wide and deep and long and high is the love of Christ. It really is the only thing that's one size fits all. Amen. Amen. I was loved into the kingdom. Now, for those of you who don't know Liz Curtis Hicks, um, she is um, an inspirational speaker, writer, author, uh, so many amazing things. Uh, but what she didn't say in this video was uh, she was a she was a, a radio DJ um, and uh, she was known for uh, just being incredibly raunchy and off color and at one point Howard Stern came to her and said I'm concerned about you I think you need to clean up your act over <laughs> so that gives you just a little bit of an idea of this person and, and where she started and the amazing thing that two people who love God and see someone who needs the love of God and what they can do, and how many people have they influenced because of that? And so the, the response of love, it's, it's, it's more than us just saying, oh, okay, I love you, God. It's, it's us doing something. It's us showing that love to other people, too. It's understanding that Understanding that our love, that the love of God and, and our love that we can display can change the world, right? And so our, our goal, our, our, our problem, I guess, is how, how do we do that? How do we display the love that God has for the world? How do we do that? You know, I think, um, you know, sometimes we get, we get hung up on big things, right? Big problems that we have to solve, big things going on in the world. And I think sometimes if we can just kind of narrow it down and focus it on one little thing, then little by little, we'll be able to make a big change, right? And so I, I'm reminded of a prayer. I don't know where I got this. I'm, I'm being completely honest. I did not create this. I don't want anybody to think that. Um, but I have... I heard it when I was young, and I've kind of had this in my head all growing up, 
God, if I don't get anything else done today, at the end of this day, I want to know you a little better, and I want to love you a little more. That's, that's the prayer. That's it. Just something simple. And, and like I said, I, I did not create this. I did not come up with this. But it's, it's one of the things that has really helped me in life because that's a, that's a, a takeable goal. Right? We're not talking about huge change. We're not talking about going out and, and trying to save the world. We're talking about making one little change. I want to know you a little better. I want to love you a little more. How can I do that? Right? So understanding that by doing that, by, by loving God, getting to know him a little more, that any day can be a success. Right? I have, I have lots of to-do lists. Uh, I have to-do lists for, for my job. I have to-do lists for my wife. I have to-do lists, all, all kinds of to-do lists. If I go through and I check off everything on my to-do list and, and get, get a bunch of stuff done, just being real, I'm super excited when that happens. However, if I've put God off for the day, then I kind of missed out, right? But if I don't get anything done, if I don't do anything but, I get to know God a little better and love God a little more. It doesn't matter. That day was a success, right? That should be our goal. That should be our goal. I think when we understand that we were created by God to love God, you know, in Revelation it says that God created us for his pleasure, right? And so if we understand that we were made by God for God, then it becomes easier to respond in love. In Exodus, God says, you, you must worship no other gods but me. God is passionate about us loving him. So we need to be passionate in our response. And I think an easy way to, to start is just to say thank you. If you can just start off by saying thank you. Thank you for what I have. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my family. Thank you for whatever it is. Thank you for my job. Thank you for silly things. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if we just start by saying thank you. Thank you. I think we find that it gets easier to find things to be thankful for. Right? Once you start, then you just kind of keep digging and keep digging and keep finding more. Thank you for the, for the day. You know, sometimes I walk outside and I say, oh, we moved to hell. It's, <laughs> it's so hot. Not literally. You know what I mean. Right? But if I could stop and say, God, Thank you. There's, there's not a cloud in the sky. The, the, the sky is beautiful blue. Coming from Michigan, I'd say two-thirds of the day were gray and overcast, right? So, so whether it's 110 or 70, having a bright blue, beautiful day, I can say thank you for that, right? So it's, it's the little things. It's the little things. I would encourage you at some point just to stop and look around and, and find things to say thank you to God for it. I think what you'll find is that you're going to start to have that response and you're going to start to have kind of a little worship experience by yourself right there. And so I think going back to Mark uh, 1230, love God with your heart and your soul. Love God with your mind. So we should love God thoughtfully. Uh, I love what, what Liz Curtis Pig said in the video. A lot of people view Christianity as something that people believe when they're not very intelligent. Uh, and how wrong she is. You know, some of the most amazing intellectual thinkers were Christians. It's, it's not mutually exclusive, right? So, so we are called to love God with our mind. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 3. You've looked deep into my heart, Lord. You know all about me. You know when I'm resting. You know when I'm working. And from heaven you discover my thoughts. You notice everything I do and everywhere I go. And so if we're going to focus on God with our mind, we need to understand that God is focused on us, right? You notice everything I do and everywhere I go. God is focused on us. So that can be our response, is to spend more time focusing on Him. You know, the easiest way to do that, let's set up a time to, to have just regular devotional time with God. You know, that's, that's really easy and hard at the same time, I think. You get really busy. And that's kind of the first thing that, that it's just really easy to say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. It'll be okay. I got a bunch of stuff to do on my to-do list for my wife, and I got to get that done, or she's going to be mad at me. So, God, you, you take the back seat, right? 
I should, I, sh I shouldn't do that, right? We shouldn't do that. We shouldn't be so quick to, to kind of put God off. I think it's really important that we have a regular devotional time, a regular time where we can, where we can connect with God. Because if we don't have that regularly, then we're gonna. It, it becomes harder to make that connection, keep that connection. Not because God is gone anywhere. Not because God is any different, but because we're different. Because we're missing out on that connection, right? So Psalm 105 4 says, seek his face always. Everything you do, seek his face. This is this is really important for us to understand is that worship is not just a feeling that we have, but worship is a thoughtful response to what God has done. And so thoughtfully, we need to focus on what he's done. We need to focus on who he is and focus on our response, right? So once again, going back to uh, Mark 12, 30. Love the, God, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and with all your strength. So we need to love God completely with, with everything we have, with all of our strength. You know, I, I think it's really easy, like I said at the beginning, to say the words, I love you. Right? I can tell my wife, I love you, all I want. If I never do anything to show that, then does she really believe it? Maybe for a while, right? But at a certain point, if I stop doing things to show my love for my wife, she's not going to believe me when I say, I love you. And I think we need to understand it's the same thing with God. You know, we can say, God, I love you, all we want. If we're not doing anything about it, then does it mean anything? I don't know. I don't know. That's that's something that's something we have to figure out. And so we are not saved by works. We don't have to do something in order to receive the gift of salvation. But if we're going to actually respond in love and worship, it requires a, it requires action. Right? Love the Lord your God with all of your strength. That is something that, that we physically will take action with. So using my abilities is a practical way to show my wife that I love her. I can, I can clean up around the house, do laundry, dishes, whatever it is, whatever needs to be done, I can do it. Right? And that is one of the ways that I can show my wife that I love her. The, the opposite effect of that is if I don't do the things that I see need to be done around the house, then she doesn't feel like I love her, right? I, I, don't, I don't know if anybody else has, maybe I'm the only one that has that experience, I don't know, uh, but that's, that's the way it is for me. For me, if I, if, if I can do things to show my, my wife that I love her, she is much more likely to, to know that and, and feel that. And so we need to have that same kind of that same view with our with our relationship with God. Colossians three twenty three says, "Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than people." So this this extends beyond just your loved ones, right? This this is beyond just doing things for God, right? Like like going out and, and standing on the corner and, and yelling at people that they need to be saved. I've never done that. I, I don't want to do that. Right? But work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than people. Man, this goes deep. Right? If you if you have a job to do that you don't want to do, um, doesn't matter. Right? If if I have if I have something that at, at my job, I'm being required to do that I really don't want to. My response, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. I'm not doing it for my boss. Right? There are times where I love working for my boss. I've got a, I've got a good boss. But I'm not, I'm not doing everything for her. Right? There are things that I do because it's just part of the job and the only way I'm going to get through it the only way it's going to get done, and it's going to get done well, is by me saying, God, I'm doing this for you. I really don't want to be here right now. I really don't want to be doing this right now. So I'm doing it for you. Because that's what we're called to do. And so 
when we do that, when we realize that that our response and our act of, of service is beyond just doing things in church or or kind of Christian type things. It, it, it extends to every part of our life. Whatever you do, do it as though you're working for the Lord. You know, this, this goes pretty deep, I think. If we understand, though, that God needs to be in the center of our lives, then it starts to make a little more sense, right? If God is in the center, if God is my reason for doing anything, then it makes it really easy because then I'm not worried about who I'm doing it for. I'm not worried about whether I want to or not. I'm not worried about my boss. I'm not worried about my kids. I'm not worried about what, whatever it is because I'm, I'm understanding that God's in the center. I'm understanding that, that God is the reason for doing those things. And so this is really, I think, the important thing about this point, about loving God with all your strength. It's not necessarily what you do that matters. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't think about what you're doing and be intentional about what you're doing, but the important thing is who you do it for. Right? I, for, for me, um, I said a little bit when, when, when I started the sermon, um, I had a hard time deciding what I was going to do when I was younger, and I went through a lot of different things. And, and part of the problem was I kept trying to figure out what what God wanted me to do, but I didn't really have direction. I just felt like there was nothing there, and I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I didn't know what God wanted me to do. And so I just kind of went in all these different directions trying to figure it out, right? And if I had sat back, and this is, I, I think, really, really hard for me, and maybe hard for other people, if I had sat back and said, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pick something, and I'm gonna go in that direction, and I'm gonna do it, for God, for the glory of God, then it becomes less important of what you do, what that choice is, because what you're doing is, is you're doing it for God, you're working for God, right? And that's not to say we don't put thought into what we're supposed to be doing. It's not to say we don't pray and ask God for guidance with what we're doing, uh, because I really think um, I ended up being, being a little bit like Paul Paul always wanted to get to Jerusalem, right? He was always trying to get back to Jerusalem. And every time he would head in that direction, God would say, nope, Holy Spirit would, would, would send him off somewhere else. And so I always kind of felt like Paul, where I'd start on this direction, and nope, I'm gonna go over here, nope, I'm gonna go over here. And that's that's kind of how, how I felt. And that's really not the important part. Like, like the, the end goal, that's secondary. The main goal is why you're doing it, right? The main goal is who you're doing it for. You could be a nurse, you could be an attorney, a truck driver, stay at home mom, stay at home dad, I did that. Um, it doesn't matter what the job is, it matters who you're doing the job for. And when we truly understand this, I think that our lives can truly become worship, right? We can truly start to live a life of worship if we understand that God is in every part of it when we keep him in the center. God is in every part of our lives when we put him where he's supposed to be. That's hard for me. That's hard for me. I don't know if it's hard for you guys, but it's hard for me because I, I like to I like to be in control. Any any other control freaks here? Okay. Not calling anybody out, but I, I like to be in control. This is really hard for me. It's, it's a daily exercise for me to say, God, I'm putting you first. God, I'm doing this for you. God, this, you you are the reason. It's a, it's a daily, daily thing that I have to do. But when we can do that, the change it makes in our lives is, is astounding. Because then people will start to see the difference. You know, if you're, if you're doing a job that nobody else wants to do, and you're doing it happy, and, and you're fine with it, and everybody's looking at you going, are you crazy? You're you're bucking out toilets and stuff. Why are you why are you singing songs? Well, because I'm doing it for God. You start to look different to the rest of the world, and I think that's really important. That's kind of been the loose association between all my messages, the, the last three messages this, um, that I, that I've done is that we should be looking different to the world, 
If we're truly following Jesus' example, people are going to look at us and say, what is different about you? That's crazy. The video, Liz Curtis Hicks, she came back from work, or she came back from the weekend, and people were like, what changed about you? They saw the difference. They should see the difference with us as well. And so let's go back to Romans 12, 1. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And so this, this feeds in a little bit to what I was saying. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, something, something to remember. You may have heard this before, but, but something that I like to remember about this verse is most of the time when you're talking about a sacrifice, what is it? It's dead, right? But we're talking about a living sacrifice. So our lives are a sacrifice. And this is what I was talking about before. I have to sacrifice my own wants, my own desires, my own control for God. That is my true and proper worship. Now, I love, um, I, I don't know if ever, any of you have ever read the message version of the Bible. I don't necessarily call it a translation because it's more like a, it's written like a novel of the Bible. So I don't love it for Bible study, but sometimes I like looking at verses just to see kind of a different, a different take on a verse that I know so well. So in the Message Bible, this verse becomes, here's what I want you to do, God help me you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offer. I love that. I love that. Just the, the, the kind of real talk that we can have your everyday ordinary life and place it before God as an offering. What a, what a great picture of worship we have there. The fact that every part of our lives, every part of our lives, not just Sunday morning, not just music time, but every part of our lives can be worship. And with this in mind, worship then becomes a lifestyle. We know that worship is important to God because Jesus said God is worship. God is God is looking for worshipers, and it's important for us to remember that I I don't think we could stop worshiping if, even if we wanted to, right? You go you go to any culture in the world and you're going to find people worshiping, not God necessarily, but they're going to be worshiping something. Uh, Philippians 3.19, their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is their shame, their mind is on earthly things. I love that. Their God is their stomach. Oh man, what a what a what a picture of just kind of kind of um, no self-control, right? You know, their God is their stomach. It's it's not it's not limited to your stomach, right? Although I, I would I would say that there are people that, that can worship their stomach. You know, what's gonna go in there next? That's sometimes me when I'm on vacation. You know, maybe we should get something to eat and then maybe after that we'll go get something else to eat over here and then we'll go get, maybe we should think about dinner after that. And sometimes sometimes we, we worship our own desires and I think that's what it's talking about. Their God is their stomach, their God is their desires. Everything they want, that's what they worship, right? But that's not what we're all about. That's not what we're talking about here. Because if we get away from our own desires and worship God, that's where true change happens. That's, that's how we live out in grace. And so I think that's, I, I guess that's where I think our difference would be. Because like I said, I think you, would, you go to any culture in the world and you're going to find people worshiping something, right? Even here. If, if they're not worshiping God, they're worshiping something else. Worshiping TV. They're worshiping influencers on Instagram. They're worshiping politicians. They're, whatever, whatever it is, they're worshiping something, right? They're putting something in the place of God. And so I think for us, Understanding that when we're truly worshiping God and we're truly living that out in our lives, that will make us look different from everybody else who all they think about is how many likes they have on a post or how many... I don't want to go too far into it. You can tell I don't love social media. I'm sorry. Um, I don't hate it, but I don't. So I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that... 
I guess I'm, I'm not saying that it's up to us, right? God is the one that calls us. God is the one that, that calls anybody to himself, and we know that. All we can do, all we can do is change our own mindset and our own responses, right? And when we do that, like the video, when we can do that and we start to, to um, make changes in our own lives and start to love people the way God wants us to love people and, and, and respond to him the way he wants us to respond, that's how we can change. But that's up to God, right? It all comes down to the reason we're doing things. If God's at the center of everything that we're doing, then we will look different. If God's at the center of everything we're doing, then we will be different. And so I want to go back to that, that little prayer that I had. God, if I don't get anything else done today, at the end of this day, I want to know you a little better, and I want to love you a little more. And I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you this week just to say that prayer. Each morning, just say that prayer. God, if I don't get anything else done today, at the end of this day, I want to know you a little better, and I want to love you a little more. And if you do that every day, you make time for God, and you respond to Him, and you focus on Him, see if God doesn't make a change in your life. See if God doesn't put people in your lives that need to see that change in your lives. See if God doesn't use that to grow His kingdom. Because that's what we want, right? No matter what we do, we put God in the center so we can grow His kingdom. Not our people. Right? So right now I just want to close off with a prayer and then we're going to have a closing song. And then I'm going to come back with a with uh, just kind of a benediction, uh, a verse of a prayer. But right now, together, if we could, I'd just like to say this prayer together. Can we do that? All right. God, if I don't get anything else done today, at the end of this day, I want to know you a little better, and I want to love you a little more. Amen.
All right, so I want to leave, I want to leave you just with a couple of verses from Numbers. Um, this is from the benediction that uh, Moses had Aaron and his sons give to the Israelites. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Can we pray just for a moment? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray for peace. I pray for peace here with these people in this church. I pray for peace in this city, in this state, in this country. God, with all the upheaval that's going on, I just pray for supernatural peace that comes from you. I thank you for this time, and I thank you for being here with us as we meet. And I lift all of this up to you in Jesus' name.